So I ordered this M3 Ultra Max Studio for $3,999. And this is before a $920 credit for my M2 Max Studio, which was just a basic model. So in today's video, I'll show the unboxing and how I transferred data from my old setup into the new computer. Fairly straightforward, as you'll see in the rest of the video. Externally, it's the same. It doesn't look any different. In fact, if you're not careful, you might want to label so you don't send back the wrong device. This is my disaster of a home office. The old system's on the left and the new one in the middle. I normally use two monitors, 27 inches, and you can see a TerraMaster RAID disk drive enclosure in between the two monitors. And I have some uh, external SSDs underneath one of the monitor stands as well. I only had 512 gigabytes in the old unit, the old M2 Mac Studio. The new one has a terabyte and has a lot more RAM, a lot more cores, more GPU, etc. Faster. M3 Ultra instead of M2. You can see the specs online on Apple site and elsewhere. So to manage this transfer, of course, you need a mouse and a keyboard or at least a trackpad for each device as well as a separate monitor. So I went ahead and hooked the left monitor to the old system and the right monitor to the new system. Found an old keyboard that came with an iMac that I generally don't use since it doesn't have a keypad, but it works okay for temporary use today and using the trackpad or mouse as the case may be. So I can manage both screens at once. So I'm using the little keyboard with the new computer and the big keyboard with the old one since it was already paired as well as the uh, black apple mouse with the old computer and a trackpad with the new one. I'm attaching a Thunderbolt cable between the two units as this will handle the data transfer at the highest possible rate much faster than a Wi-Fi or internet connection can do as you'll see later. So to get the trackpad and keyboard to link with the new computer where you don't have access to a mouse or anything to do the controls, it's easier just to hook this up directly to the computer with a cable and then the computer will recognize it without the cable or with the cable. And here you can see I've got it hooked up as I'm going through the setup screens on the new computer, which again is attached to the monitor on the right. Using the same method to connect a hardwire connection to the keyboard so that it can be recognized as well. It is required to have an internet connection, so I'm trying to attach to my home Wi-Fi. Of course, I forgot the password since there's so darn many passwords in the house, but eventually got it connected. So when the new computer gets through the first few setup screens, it brings up the Migration Assistant. You have to run this app on the sending computer, which is the computer to the left as well. Here you can see we have the Migration Assistant running on both computers now. And now you can see on the receiving computer we have the option to restore from a network attached storage that's on my network or from the M2 Mac Studio which is on the left part of the right screen there.
And here's where it suddenly realizes that the operating systems don't match because I'm part of the Apple developer beta software program and I had a beta version of Mac OS installed on the old machine. So it has a download this update onto the new machine. This took almost two hours just to download the software, maybe because people were receiving these things the same day I did all over the country, overwhelming Apple servers. So eventually the new software arrived and was installed onto the new computer before the migration could proceed. Getting closer here, saying about 10 minutes left. So now it's doing the installing part, 35 minutes more after taking a bit over an hour just to download this 15 gigabyte update. Now the actual transfer, which was really pretty fast going through the Thunderbolt cable, it averaged around 600 megabits per second, megabytes per second, I, I should say. So it had the maximum camera. theoretical speed of almost 2,000 some of this process. megabytes per second. So this really and only took about an hour is by to move quite a bit of information. There's the sender, there's the receiver. So it says migration completed, and the new system's rebooting, so let's see what happens. So here the migration is completed. After this, I booted the system up, attached all the external drives that had been attached to the old device onto the new one. And since I had moved some folder locations with uh, symbolic links, this was necessary to find my downloads, my documents, and my photo collection. And everything worked good as new, but faster. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.